Ladies and gentlemen, this is Joe's Classic Video Games back with another cool pinball repair video for you this evening. We have been working on this old, old, ancient Stern Stingray pinball machine. It was one of their early solid state games. And uh, we got this in a few months ago and have decided to get it up and running. So on the first video that you missed, or wait a minute, maybe you didn't miss it. I shouldn't assume that people missed it. But on the first video that I'll bet you saw, uh, we kind of went over the whole thing. We cleaned it, cleaned it out a little bit, looked at what was in it, showed off the condition that it's in as we speak. And the video ended after we had repaired the transformer with us getting a few of the light bulbs to work. The machine is talking to us. It's trying to come back. It's trying to help us. So in this video, we're going to help it. So we have this transformer here that we cobbled back together. We've got that doing pretty good. And so after the machine creates the voltages on the transformer board, it sends them up here to the solenoid driver board, which changes the voltages and, and uh, uh, I guess it uh, changes the voltages. <laughs> it uh, further regulates the voltages, whatever you want to say. Uh, and it makes it turns the 12 volts into 5 volts and it, it um, you know makes the coils work and all of that stuff so it makes the high voltage um, for the well it doesn't make it but it regulates the high voltage for the displays etc etc so this is the next board that the power runs to so whenever we work on these we like to do them in order especially whenever they're just completely destroyed like this one pretty much was so the voltage is coming in from the line on the cord down to a little filter on the bottom of the cabinet and then up through some wires to this transformer, which is uh, uh, transforming, right? <laughs> it's transforming the voltages for us, sending it to this little rectifier board, which is rectifying. It's rectifying the voltages for us. So now we're up to the regulator, the regulator board. Now you might say, if you're if you're into these, you probably know, but it, you might say, well, how do you know what's going on without looking at this stuff? Well, it's because all of these are the same. So all of the sterns, were, the early sterns were the same, and they basically ripped off the design from Bally. So all of the early Bally's were like this, too. So once you work on a few of them, it's all the same, folks. It's all the same. The only thing that makes them different, sometimes they'll have a couple extra boards, but the only thing that makes them different are the ROMs on the MPU. And, of course, the play field layout and all of that so but all of this is just the standard power flow uh, on all the early valleys and all the early sterns so our next thing is we need the voltage regulator board or the the um, solenoid driver voltage regulator board or whatever they want to call it so we're going to go find one of these now if you've watched any of our other videos whenever I do these I like to kind of since the stern and the valley boards are the same you can use either one but I kind of just because of uh, a neurotic tendency that I have to do this, I'm going to see if I've got a, an actual stern voltage uh, uh, solenoid board that we can put in it. So I may have one that actually was for a stern, but if I don't, we'll use a uh, we'll use a bally. So I'm going to go grab my box of those. I've got a box of them, and uh, we'll see what's in it. Looks like I have seven left. I might have to get some some new ones pretty soon. So that is a Bally, or do you pronounce it Belay? <laughs> it's a Belay. Look, there's a Stern. Doesn't really matter. We can put any of them in, but this one might be a good candidate. Stern SDU 100. So I like that one. It looks like it's pretty, pretty complete too. That's another belay. That's a stern. Hmm. 102478. I don't think the um I think this game's a little older than that. Again, not that it matters. Another bally. Another Bally Boy, that one's seen better days there, hasn't it? And finally, another Bally. 
Okay. Okay, okay. So we'll save our bally's, because why not? I mean, if you're working on a stern, why not put one in it that actually says stern? What would be wrong with that? Okay, so I have these two. This one's a little newer. I think that's probably a little too new. And then I've got this old school one here. Yeah, I kind of like the looks of that one. So, uh, let me go look at the, uh, the release date of Stingray. So the date it was made was uh, or released was December of 1977, and on the schematics, the regulator board was uh, revised or whatever September of 77. So the part numbers don't line up or anything, but I think it was pretty much this one that was in it. The other one was made in 78, so it wouldn't have been in the game. And again, none of this matters. You can put any of them in it, but why not put this one in there, right? Stern's SDU 100, Revision 2, it says. Okay, so we're going to do the typical thing that we do on these, which is we're going to check all the transistors to see if any of them are shorted. Looks like maybe that one's been replaced. Um, we're going to check our voltage regulator to see what kind of condition it seems to be in with the diode, the diode test on our meter. We're going to look for little stuff like this where the test point is bending over and touching something maybe it shouldn't. Perhaps. Um, usually these capacitors don't need changed, but uh, we're going to reflow the solder on the back of all the connectors. Um, if any of them are in real bad shape, might have to replace those. We're going to take this window off and clean it. And under there is the stuff that creates the voltage or uh, regulates the voltage for the displays and makes it adjustable. We're going to replace this big capacitor. So we got some stuff to do. We're going to push this relay back in its socket. <laughs> so uh, I'll start cleaning it up and we'll see what we can uh, accomplish. Okay, so I have re-soldered all of the connectors. Cleaned off the front a little bit. And I am now testing the uh, tip 102 transistors on the bottom here that control all the solenoids and someone has went ahead of me and already done that and everywhere they have put a little dot that transistor tests bad so somehow this board has one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve fourteen transistors out of one, two three four five six seven eight 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. 14 out of 19 of them are burnt, slapped the hell up. <laughs> they're not shorted, they're open. So I don't know, maybe they just, maybe they're all failing with age, I don't know. But it needs 14 transistors to fix it. Crazy. So, guess what I get to do? Change 14 transistors. Someone has sent me some little probes uh, that I can use to test these. So uh, I'll turn it over and show you how I'm testing it with those little probes. Okay, so when you test on this particular transistor from the middle leg to the bottom leg, you get a voltage drop between four and six, right? Now the bottom leg is connected to this, uh, they're all connected together. Whenever you test the ones in the board, four or five of them test all right, but something like 14 of them test messed up. But I put it on the same. Let me reverse it just to make sure. Whoop. I don't short it. I guess I can use the top. So you get a <laughs> you get an open reading.
Well. Oh, it's because I was touching the other one. Yeah, so basically 14 of them do not test right. And the way the board is... That middle leg just goes out to the outside pin. So I'm going to replace one and see if that repairs it. Because, you know, I'm testing them all in the board. And see if that repairs it. And if it does, I've got to replace 14 of them. So, ooh, so we'll start with this one. All of those were bad. And they test bad out of the board. And then I put all new ones in, and all of them test good in the board. So, <laughs> I have no clue what would cause that to happen. It had to be something uh, traumatic. So I thought what I'd do is I'd look on the schematics and see if we could figure any of it out. So Q1 and Q2 were bad. Um, Q2, it says, does the tens chime. And Q1, does the 100 chime. Q3 and Q4 live through it. <laughs> um, Q4 is the out hole, so really no rhyme or reason. Q3... Um, is the knocker five six seven eight nine we're all bad I'm, I'm trying to see if one of the ones that's not used is bad okay five is the chime six is it says extra chime which I think it did have four chimes um, seven is not used and was bad eight is not used and was bad. Nine is the left bumper. It was bad. Yes, I don't know. They must ju they must just fail from old age. Maybe it's been sitting somewhere for forever. Hmm. Well, I've got one, two, three, four, four I didn't replace. Makes you wonder, should I replace those? Huh. So, whenever we fix these, it takes us a little while, so I'd like to get it up and running in the machine and then kind of see if any more of them fell. That might be interesting to pay attention to. Oh, I guess I could give you the part number. So the ones that were in there are... I can't read it from here, but you probably can. Who knows? I replaced them with tip 102s. So next I'm going to replace this uh, filter capacitor. Uh, you can uh, cut this off and put a new one in. These things, they start giving you problems where the game will reset. It screws up the, the 5 volt that lets Ripple be on the line. So we're definitely replacing that. We're also going to do a little mod where we tie test point 3 and test point 1 together. Um, one of these leaves the board on one of these pins and then comes back on the board to provide that voltage and it's just if you make a little shortcut it works a little better all, all of this update stuff I always get from pinrepair.com where uh, Clay goes through all of that uh, what else are we going to do and that's about it this, this is for the displays this cap sometimes you have to replace it but you can actually get a good Visual of if you need to replace it is if the uh, displays kind of have a wiggle in them. This cap's going bad, but if uh, if you plug it in and it doesn't, you're good. I guess if you had an ESR meter, you could check that. Looks like nothing in the high voltage is burnt up yet. Sometimes you'll have diodes or resistor smoke depending on what went down. But we'll test the trend, the two transistors here, and make sure they're all right. That one actually has some marking on it. I hope that doesn't mean it's bad. But if it does, we'll replace it. So I'll test some more stuff, and I'm going to uh, replace that cap, do our little jumper wire, and we'll see what we end up with. All right, so I'll show you what we did. This is what we do. This to pretty much all of them. We get we get all this information 
from pinrepair.com. We've been following that for years and it's done us very well. So the five volt filter capacitor needs to be replaced because they're really old. So this one was an 11,000 UF 20 volt, right? And it says uh, 7811. So maybe that's uh, the 11th week of 1978, maybe. It's old, people. Now, this one's just as old, but I don't have one to replace that with. But if you feel like it, order that one too. But uh, we've replaced it with a 15,000 UF, so we went up a little bit. It seems to make them work a little well. Supposedly, it's a little undervalued originally, so you go up a little bit. So we've got 15,000 on it. Uh, and just solder the wires to it. Okay, so that's the first little update. And then the other one that we do, I'll show you, uh, well, I'll show you on the back. All of these boards are laid out a little bit different. This is the Stern one. So this is a really early PCB board by a company that didn't have a ton of money. So the traces were hand-drawn whenever they made the die or whatever. See how they have kind of weird curves and angles to them? Some of this early stuff, that's just how it was made. Somebody literally would lay it out by hand. <laughs> right? Isn't that wild? Okay, so uh, this is the negative uh, of that filter capacitor, right? So the negative on this board, now there's other ones that are a different setup, but if you look, it just runs over to pin 10, and that's all it connects to. So that that entire the five volt logic that runs everything, the filter capacitor that it's that's filtering all of it, it the only way it gets ground is through that one pin. So if you have any kind of problem, you're in trouble, right? So on the schematic, this is that area. So this is that filter capacitor, right? It's actually across the the 12 volt, but uh, the ground connects to pin 10. And it goes to the transformer and it says bridge and ground, blah, blah, blah. So one wire goes all the way down to the transformer and it connects to the ground down there on the transformer. So what, I, what I've done, and again, this is all from pinrepair.com, is uh, I've attached a wire to that so that not only is it connected to 10, but it's also connected to the ground of this board. So if this board gets a ground, that filter capacitor has a ground. And you, you're just tying all the grounds together. So this is the positive. Uh, and it runs over to here and then through a thing, blah, 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 blah. But this is the, um, this is test point one. Test point one and test point five are right beside each other. And then there's a test point three down here. So there's a weird little thing that they do here too. So here's test point one. That's the five volt. Okay. Now notice test point three is the five volt bus line. I guess this is for the the um, these chips here, right? Okay, but look where it gets its five its five volts from. It gets it from pin twenty five of J three, which comes from pin thirteen of J three. So in the harness that you plug in, there is actually a little jumper wire. So one way that it so if you get any kind of problem there or any kind of problem there now you have problem on all of your solenoid uh, control right so the way you can fix that is if you just put a jumper wire from this test point one to test point three now the five volts just stays on the board and it you know of course that's still connected you don't have to change any of that but your volt it just makes that make sure that you've got a good connection and then the last thing that we do is this big cap up here. That's the negative. You just put a little jumper over to the ground. Is it a positive is this in? A negative is that in? Right? And so the reason that you're jumpering that over to ground is because here's that um, here's that capacitor. The ground of the capacitor connects to pin three which uh, is the transformer bridge and ground. So it's the same thing. This The only way that gets its ground is from the transformer, that one wire coming up. So it just works a little better 
or it's a little smarter if you just put a little jumper. Now, you can't just put jumpers on anywhere. You, need, you really need to look on the schematics to make sure you're putting the jumper in the right place. But we're just basically uh, connecting up some of the grounds and also the 5 volt on that one line that goes out. There's some other little updates and stuff that people have done. Um, like, for instance, this high voltage area. Everything tests fine, but there's no fuse. They weren't using a fuse then. Um, there may be one on the back of the back box. We'll have to look at that. But that's something that you could add in if you wanted to. So, we're ready to put it in the game. Now, when we put it in, maybe something will screw up all of those transistors that we replaced. But I don't really see how, because they failed open. They didn't short. So. I don't know, folks. But we'll try it in the game and see if it seems like it's making 5 volts for us. Okay, we've mounted it back in temporarily. Uh, I didn't put the screws in it yet, but let's turn it on and see if anything blows up. All right. You heard that, right? And you heard what I did, right? So I plugged in the solenoid connectors. Okay. But I have unplugged the volt, the five volt connections to the to the boards. I also unplugged the displays because this thing we don't really know, you know, if it if it's screwed up or what. So we turned it on, and immediately you hear a coil lock on. So I'm gonna turn it on again just for a second, see if I can figure out which one it is. I'm thinking it's the out hole. No, it isn't because there's a. There's a ball in the out hole. Okay, it's this left kicker. Um, all right, I'm gonna pop the play field and we'll look at that real quick. Okay, so I unplugged the solenoids. Just the reason that you're doing that is just because you don't want it connected to that board. And they are still, they would still have their uh, hot connected, but they wouldn't have their ground connected anymore. So this wire isn't going anywhere now because it's not plugged into the board, right? And you put your meter on ohms. And you've got 10 ohms on that, which is probably just fine. So the coil doesn't seem to actually be bad. You, we can... Uh, compare it to the one over here, if I can do it without dropping my meter. Yeah, one on the other side gives us a similar reading. So that coil's fine, which tells you that since it's locking on, it must be that board that we were just working on. So I'm going to look in the schematics and see which transistor does the uh, left kicker. Okay, left slingshot is Q16, and it comes from U4. U4 and Q16. Hmm, all right. Well, I tested all those when it was out of the uh, game, but I must have not tested them well enough, huh? All right, so let's see if we can figure out if Q16 tests different. So the first thing you want to do if you get one that's locked on, but it's not the um, it's not the coil, is you want to test the transistor. So it was a Q16, this one, and it's testing the same as all the other ones. So it's not the transistor. Plus we just replaced it with a brand new one, so I doubt it's that. So the next thing you want to check is the diodes behind it, and they all test the same. All the way down, all the diodes test the same both ways um, with a diode test, right? So, since that's not it, the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to go back to the U4 chip, right? So, if you look, the way the whole thing works is the, um, the MPU talks with this chip, or not, not that chip, that's a connector. MPU uh, talks through this connector to this chip which talks to the U, to the uh, transistor array chips, so U4, U3, and U1. So the MPU sends signals to this chip. This chip controls these little chips. These little chips are like pre-drivers for the transistor that locks on the coil, right? 
So we're working backwards kind of on this one. The coil we know is not, not a problem. There may be a wiring problem or something, maybe something shorted together or something that I don't know about in the cabinet. But the coil is not the problem. The transistor is not the problem. The diode is not the problem. The resistors all, all seem fine, right? The capacitor we can't really tell, but we're, all, of our, all, of our, all of our readings are the same back to here on all of these. So, you know, you can just compare them with each other, right? So now we're back to the chip. So what we're going to do is we're going to compare a couple of those. So if you look, this is the one that turns it on. Uh, this chip sends a signal in at pin 8, goes out at pin 7. Well, 8 and 7 are create are connected, I shouldn't say out, because that's the emitter. But. So 8 and 7 on U4 are the ones that we're concerned with. But look, on uh, U1, 8 and 7 also make something work. And I don't know about U3. Yeah, 8 and 7 also make one work on U3. So 8 and 7, I have three different 8 and 7s here I can compare. Right? So you don't even need to know what they do or, or what chip it is or look up the, 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 um, the uh, white sheet or whatever they call it on it. Right? The, the spec. <laughs> so we're going to look at U1. So the, the signal comes from 8 and it controls 7. Right? So, pin 8, that's kind of, we'll call that the input, 0.7, and then the output, we'll call it, it's connected to the our intended output, even though it's not the emitter, 0.123, right? So, 0.7 something, and then 0.123. And if you look at some of the other uh, arrangements, like uh, 3 and 2 are the same way, three and two. It's pretty consistent the way they work, right? So that's U1. So U3, same same thing. That's what we're getting on pin eight. That's what we're getting on pin seven. That's what we're getting on pin three. That's what we're getting on pin two. Now here's U4. This is our one. And pin eight, eight and seven are our our hour <laughs> uh, pertinent pins, right? So they're pin eight. Wah, wah, wah. Completely different. There's pin seven. It's right. So pin three. It's right. Pin two. It seems right. So it's kind of strange because we're actually getting a higher reading than normal, which would make you think that because of that, the coil wouldn't fire, but it must work backwards than how I'm thinking. That would be where having the 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 um, the papers for the sucker would work. So it is a CA3081 chip. CA3081. Do they have it? Labeled on here is that <laughs> let's see if any of them are say what they officially called it. None of them are labeled on the schematic, but it's a CA thirty eighty one. And this is a 74LS154. I mean a 74L154. So CA3081. Whichever. We're getting a weird reading on this one. We also, we're fairly confident the coil's right. We're fairly confident the transistor's right. We're fairly confident the diode's right. And this one's giving us a weird reading. It could be one of the resistors or something connected to it, but I, I can't find anything like that, so... I'm going to replace this chip. I don't have any new ones, so I'm going to have to steal one off another solenoid board. But remember, we had some that were parts. So I'll see if I can uh, grab one off one, and we'll swap that chip and see if that fixes it. All right, I swapped in another one. Let's see what we got now. 
That's more like it. Yeah. Okay, so we'll put it back in and test it again. Um, same thing though. If you turn it on and you hear a coil lock on, turn it off immediately and usually it won't fry anything worse than what was, uh, what was already fried. All right, so mounted it back in, turned it on, and nothing locked on. Now, we may have problems down the road where some of the solenoids don't work, but at least they're not locking on and burning stuff up. And everything, everything tests fine, so. By the way, that chip that we replaced, you rarely get that problem. I've only replaced a few of those over the years, so. Usually that's not an issue. Okay, so we've got it, uh, so think about what we've done so far. We've got the power into the game, power up to the transformer, power into the rectifier, power from the rectifier up into the solenoid board. Look, people, I didn't design these. <laughs> That's how they designed them. So what it does next, if you look on the schematics, is this board. Uh, oh, and remember how when we tested the power supply, it was at the, the display voltages were really low instead of at 220 or whatever it says it's supposed to be, 230. Well, once you have this board plugged in with the associated stuff, if you check that, we now have 258. So it makes it go high. I don't know why, but whenever this plugs in, it makes the voltage go higher. Very strange. Um, so just for that section, so we're at 258 now. It comes in up here, and then there is a, it's really hard to get to it. If you take this off, it's easier, but you get to that test point. It is at 173. So the, the displays will be running on 173 voltages. You can adjust it with that knob up there, but eh, 173 is pretty good. I like that. Uh, and it also sends 12 volts unregulated, which means it's going to be higher, up to test point 5 up here. Right? So we're at almost 16. And then this circuit makes the 5 volts that runs the boards. And uh, it sends it back out on test point 1. 5.23. And then, of course, test point 3, we, we tie it directly to it. So this, the, the logic chips here are now running off of 5.23. You've got some other tests. Um, there's test point six and seven here. I never test those, I don't even know what they do. Okay, but uh, what's, what is that telling us? It's telling us that the solenoid board is, is creating the correct voltage for the displays, and it's also creating the correct voltage for the PCBs. So what I'm gonna do now is, I'm gonna turn it off, and I'm just gonna plug uh, the lamp board, which I can see corrosion damage on it, and I'm going to plug the MPU board, which I can see corrosion damage on. I'm going to plug those in and just see if it even tries to boot, just so that we have a starting point or reference. And maybe we'll get lucky. Maybe it'll boot, but we're going to have to work on it anyway. So um, we'll, uh, we'll plug that in and see if it even tries to boot up. Okay, so we've plugged them both in. Now, uh, usually the corrosion screws up all the connectors, too. So, of course, we haven't repinned any connectors or replaced any of them or anything yet, which you pretty much always have to do on a Bally game. Um, we got lucky and didn't have to do any down here. Either somebody had done some in the past, and then these two connectors ended up being fine. The solenoid connections usually don't have a problem. Um, but this one over here is really problematic. That's where all the power comes in to the board, and that's also right down where the battery is. So usually the battery will eat up this area and this area. So both of these connectors usually have to get replaced. And then the problem that you get is the juice from the battery drips down on the lamp board, which was right under it. Oh, no, what are you doing to me? Why would you do that to me? Okay, so what we're looking for is this little LED right here will flash or stay on or something. And on a properly working board, it'll flash real quick and then it'll flash seven times and then it boots up. But I doubt much of that will happen. <laughs> okay. So you didn't see what happened. It, it just was stuck on, which usually means that the board screwed up. And then it started flashing and stuff, and it started firing coils and stuff and going crazy. So we're going to have to take it out and work on it. Okay, folks, so that'll do it for this evening. We'll film the other stuff on a separate video. Look for it soon, probably within the next few days. 
Um, we've got the power up to and exiting the solenoid driver board though, so I'm cool with that. So next up, the Mighty MPU, which may or may not be able to be saved, but we'll try. So we'll be doing corrosion and alkaline repair. Yay, I'm so excited. Boy, I can't wait to do that. And look, it's got those really old ROMs in it and really old ROM sockets. Boy, won't that be fun? Wow. So leave your comments below. Let us know what you think so far. Are we spending too much time on this thing? Is it even worth all this trouble? Right? Shouldn't I just ignore this stern stingray like every other person has for 20 years now or whatever it's been? Why am I going through all this trouble to fix this thing? And then I'm even filming it. You know, that's a bunch of trouble too. What do you think? Is it worth it? Should I finish it? I think I probably will. So leave your comments below. Let us know what you think. You can check out our website too. Go to lionsarcade.com. See what games we have available for sale. You can come see us. We're in downtown Rock Hill, South Carolina. We've got a whole building full of games like this. Uh, now, if you can't come see us and you don't want to buy one, just subscribe to us here on YouTube. And make sure to give us a thumbs up for taking the trouble to film this for you. We have an Amazon link below. If you go to that Amazon link, you don't have to sign up for anything or anything. It's just if you're going to go to Amazon and buy something, click that link first. And it tells Amazon that we sent you there. And Amazon pays us a royalty for anything anybody buys on Amazon after clicking that link. We appreciate all the great people who have been doing that for us. You rock. Thank you very much. And then finally... We have a second channel that we have done, that we have started. My brother, Donnie, my third brother, counting me, there's three of us. My brother, Donnie, has a channel called My Brother Donnie. So go find that. Uh, I'm on there, too. We're working on an old mobile home that we're fixing up right now. And it's pretty funny. It's pretty crazy. If you like farming and uh, crazy mechanics and stuff like that, fixing, fixing uh small engine repair, stuff like that, you'll enjoy his channel. And like I said, I'm on there too, at least for the moment, because we're working on an old beat-up mobile home, which is pretty funny. Uh, so go see that. My brother, Donnie, uh, the, the link is down below. Make sure to give us a thumbs up, and uh, we will see you on the next video.